this video? Well, review vector dot product and two, three in dimensions. And cross product in three dimensions. Uh, sort of as an aside here, I was teaching this down the street, and I said cross products only defined in three dimensions, but because we live in a three dimensional world, it makes sense. Some guy in the back of the class Googles cross product, and there's a Wikipedia page that says it's also defined in eight dimensions. And I said, I don't know. We care about three dimensions. Okay? So let's consider a couple of vectors. I'll call them A and B. Uh, the first example I'll give you uh, component form. So we have three and eight. I'm just pulling these numbers at random. Uh, B is equal to two and negative seven. And the task is we have to define what we mean by A dot B, and then what is it used for? So you have to do two things. You have to find, first of all, find the dot product, and then use it. And the application that we have, the one we've been looking at, to find the angle, angle between A and B. OK? Uh, now, if you go in the textbook, the dot product is pretty easily. It just says if you have a uh, vector x1, comma, x, let's say y1, we'll do x's and y's, uh, y1, and you're dotting it with another vector x2, comma, y2. So, you, you know, this would be x1 and y1, and this would be x2, y2. Uh, by definition, the dot product is simply going to be um, a sum. It's a scalar. It's x1, x2. So you multiply these two together, and you multiply these two together, and you just add them up. So y1, y2. And that's by definition. Now, you might want to wonder, you know, where does this come from? Why is it used? Uh, that's really beyond the scope of this course. I need you to be able to find a dot b. So 3, 8, dotted with 2, negative 7, is simply going to be the scalar, 3 times 2, that's obviously 6, and then 8 times negative 7, negative 56. So 6 minus 56 is negative 50. And that's the answer to this problem. Okay? So A dot B is negative 50. Now, what is it used for? Okay, if we sketch A and B, and I think I've got enough room here to get a little sketch going, if we sketch the vectors A and B, remember these are directed line segments. So 3 and 8 uh, goes 3 units to the right and 8 units up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so here's vector A. Now, technically, because this is math and not physics, this is a free vector. You can put it wherever you want. Uh, I've got it sitting here at the origin, but if you want to put it over here, that's still vector A. Same components. You go three units that way and eight units up. Three over eight up. Right? But it's most convenient if we put the initial point at the origin, like that. Okay, so there's A. And let me sketch B. I'll use green for B. B is 2 and negative 7. 1, 2, and now we're going down. 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 2 and negative 7 is right here. Okay, and again, that is a free vector. You can move it around. But the question is, what's the angle between those two vectors? It's obviously obtuse. I don't know, 150 degrees, something like that. Okay, so our task is to find this angle, theta. And to do that, we're going to use a dot product. Okay, so there's a nice formula. Uh, I'll give it to you. In fact, Mr. Melson and I were talking about there's no need for you to memorize a bunch of stuff. This is going to be an open notes test, just open notes test. So whatever you've written down, you can use. Okay? So here's the formula. Uh, the cosine of the angle 
is going to be A dot B divided by their magnitudes. Now, that begs the question, how do you get the magnitude? The magnitude is just the length of these, and that's a geometry thing. That's not really trig, or even algebra 2 for that matter. If you want to figure out how long this blue one is, use Pythagoras. We're going 3 that way, and 8 up. So 3 squared is 9. 8 squared is 64. Add those up, you get 73, and then take the square root. Okay, so this guy is the square root of 73. That's how long it is. That's the magnitude. How long, you know, a squared plus b squared is c squared. Right? And likewise, the magnitude of this one, it's 2 over and 7 down. So a little right triangle in here. Uh, 2 squared is 4. 7 squared is 49. 49 is 4 is 53. So this is the square root of 53. And hopefully, you know, by the time you get to a fourth high school math course that you've taken, Pythagorean theorem is like second nature for finding the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Okay, now, to find this angle, you need three things. You need the dot product, which we've already calculated. That was negative 50, so I'll put that in. And you need the product of their magnitudes. Now, you need to know how long A was, and we said that was the square root of 73. Square root of 73. And B was the square root of 53. Now, at this stage, you're probably going to be grabbing your calculator. So let's do that. Okay, now the cosine is going to be this number. I really don't want the cosine. I want the angle itself. So um, if we're in degree mode, it will give us the angle in degrees. If we're in radian mode, it will give us the angle in radians. I, I really don't care. When I looked at this picture, I thought that the angle was about 150 degrees, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to do it in degree mode just to see how close I was. And we'll just use this formula. Oops, not that one. We'll use this formula. Go oh away. Okay, so cosine inverse. All right, because you're solving this for theta, obviously. Theta is going to be the cosine inverse of that expression. Okay, so just dump that into your calculator. Uh, by the way, I can do one other thing to make this a little bit easier. You know, if you have two square roots multiplied together, you can do it this way. The square root of 73 times 53. So it just keeps me from doing one more square root than I need to. Cosine inverse of negative 50 divided divided by the square root of 73 times 53. 73 times 53, close, and hit enter. Okay, so it's about a 143 degree angle. So theta uh, to the nearest thousandth, and get in the habit of going to the nearest thousandth unless otherwise asked, 143.499 degrees. So theta is approximately 143.4. 99 degrees. Okay. Everybody good on dot product and how you can use it? Yep. Doesn't matter. Well, you can, it's like how far do you live from school? You can tell me that answer in miles. You could tell it to me in kilometers. If you were being really weird, you could do it in inches. I live 10 million inches from school. A distance can be used in any, any units. And angles can be measured in lots of different units. You can use degrees, you can use radians, you could use grads. We haven't talked about grads, but that's another way to measure angles. Um, read the problem. If it says, tell me how far you lived away from school and give me your answer in kilometers, then you have to give it in kilometers. If I said, tell me the angle and give me the answer in degrees, then I expect this, and if you gave it to me in radians, I would knock off, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so if I just said, find the angle, uh, the units are up to you. Although, I will tell you that if you're thinking degrees and you write that, that's wrong. That's not the number of degrees. Because you, you didn't put the units in. Right? Without the degree symbol, you're telling me the angle is in, is in radians. And that's false. Okay, so degrees would be good. Okay, so dot product in two dimensions. 
Now, the intriguing thing is this same operation can be done in three dimensions. So let's create a three-dimensional vector, really hard to draw pictures. Uh, we would have to deal with an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. We're in three space now. So uh, let's call this vector v. And for this one, I'm not going to give it to you in component form. I'll give it to you in ijk form, ijk form, which is often used. Okay, so let's say we're going three units in the x direction and two units in the y direction, and we'll go four units down, which means we're going to end up down below the floor somewhere. Okay, so there's vector v. Here's vector w, um, and we'll go... Uh, three units in the x direction again, but now we won't go anywhere in the y direction, 0j. And then in the k direction, we'll just go one unit, 1k. Okay, so here's two vectors. I've given them to you in ijk form. If you don't like that, feel free to rewrite them in component form. It's perfectly acceptable. Okay, so this one would be 3, 2, negative 4. Right? And this one would be 3, 0, and 1. So there's the components, and there's the IJK form. Uh, frankly, I sort of like component form, but in a lot of the textbooks I'm teaching out of, in calculus, a lot of times they, they give vectors in, you know, using the standard unit vectors as part of the problem. And a lot of times I just convert it to component form right off the bat. Okay, so here's the task. Uh, find V dot W, and then find the angle between V and W. So it's almost the exact same problem, except you've got one more, one more component in three space. So V, v dot W, 3, 2, negative 4, dotted with 3, 0, 1. And remember the way we did it in two dimensions. You multiply these together, that would be 9. Right? 9. Uh, then you multiply the next components together. 2 times 0, that would be 0. I'm going to add those up. But now we have a third component that we're going to be multiplying. So we multiply those together, and that's negative 4. So we're going to add a negative 4. And we just work all that out, and we get 5. That's the dot product. Now, um, in the spring, I'm teaching my, my 8 super kids uh, linear algebra linear algebra deals with vectors of any dimension so you can have a dot product of a 17 dimensional vector i'm not going to give you a 17 dimensional vector in trig class but for a bonus i may give you a four dimensional vector and find the dot product you could do it in your head we'll come back to this one in just a sec suppose i gave you one two three four and told you to dot it with one Two zero one. Got the answer flag a hand up. What do you got? I didn't get eight. I got nine. Nine? Okay. So you multiply these together, that's one. Multiply those together, that's four. One and four is five. Multiply these together, that's zero. And multiply that together, that's four. Five plus four is nine. Done. Right, dot products, very, very easy to do. You can do them in your head. Okay, now, let's go back to this problem. Uh, we found the dot product. It happens to be five, angle between them. So the angle between the two vectors is, again, the exact same formula. It's the cosine of the angle is given as V dot W. But now you're going to divide by the magnitude of V and the magnitude of W. Okay? So I guess if you wanted another formula just to make it like this is the only thing you have to do. Theta is going to be the cosine inverse of that, but I suppose you could do that on your calculator. Remember the double bars mean magnitude or length. So these double bars, the magnitude or how long it is. Okay, so we've already done the dot product. The dot product was five. So theta is going to be the cosine inverse of 5. Now, how about the magnitude? How do you find out how long one of these vectors is? Well, again, you're using Pythagoras to do this. So for a Pythagorean theorem, you square each side, add them up, 
take the square root. Now, this technically isn't a triangle. It's two triangles. But the magnitude of V, magnitude of V, is simply going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 4 squared. And again, mostly with small numbers like this, you could pretty much do it in your head. This is 9, and that's 4. 9 and 4 is 13, and that's 16. 13 and 16 is 29, square root of 29. That's the magnitude of V. Okay, so we can put that down on the bottom here. Square root of 29. And the magnitude of W, uh, the numbers are really easy there because there's a zero. Right? Magnitude of W is? It's not 10. Square root of 10. Square root of 10. So the magnitude of W. Again, just square each term, add them up, take the square root. So 9 plus 0 plus 1. Square root of 10. So this would be... Um, the first bit was the square root of 29. This is the square root of 10. Square root of 29 times the square root of 10 is the square root of 290. Right? You see that, Robert? Okay. So now you want to get the angle? Just dump it in your calculator. So cosine inverse of 5 divided by square root of 290. Okay, so 72 degrees, thereabouts. And you can get it to the nearest thousandth, the nearest ten thousandth, nearest hundred millionth, however many decimal places your calculator gives you. Questions on dot products and cross products? Okay, now, there is a special, special situation. Sit situation, and that is for vectors that are orthogonal. Uh, orthogonal vectors. Orthogonal vectors are those that form a right angle. Orthogonal means forms a right angle. Uh, an example would be, let's go back to two dimensions. Let's say I went five units to the right and one up. Okay, so this is vector, uh, we'll call it M, and that's five, one. Okay, five units to the right and one unit up. And we're going to go perpendicular. So the way I can do that, let's see, the slope of this, I mean, if we just look at, at slopes for a minute, the slope happens to be up one one fifth, right? So if I wanted a perpendicular vector, it has to have a slope of negative five, negative five. And the way I'm going to do that is I'll go uh, two to the right, one, two, and I'll go down ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I did this accurately, this vector I'll call n, and that would be two, negative ten. And I know just from the way I've constructed it that these will be perpendicular. Uh, these will form a right angle. And whenever we have vectors that form a right angle, we use that special word orthogonal. Okay, but let's suppose I didn't know they were orthogonal, and I wanted to try to find the angle between them. So we need, first of all, their dot product. So m dot n is going to be 5 comma 1 dotted with 2 comma negative 10, and you should convince yourself that works out to be 0. All right, 10 and negative 10 add up to 0. Multiply these, multiply these, add them up, and get 0. Okay, so the angle between them, theta, is going to be the cosine inverse of their dot product divided by the product of their magnitudes. Now, I'm going to go ahead and write down the product of their magnitudes, but in fact, you really don't have to do this. Okay. We know that these are not zero length vectors. It's sort of a, you know, what is a vector of length zero? What does that mean? Uh, this particular vector, the red one, has a magnitude of the square root of 26. I know it's not zero, so I could put that down here, square root of 26 for m. 
and in. Well, how long is that? There's your two components. Square root of? Agrius, anybody? Hundred and four, sure. Square root of hundred and four. Square root of hundred and four. Now, that fraction is zero. Zero divided by anything that's not zero is zero. So theta is the cosine inverse of zero. Theta is the arc that has a cosine of zero, unit circle. You should be pretty clear that the cosine of zero is up here. Theta is pi over two. Okay. If the dot product comes out to be zero, you don't have to do any of this. As soon as you see the dot product zero, you go, aha, these vectors are orthogonal, and you can stop. They have to form a right angle. Now, real easy to see in two dimensions because I, I set it up that way with slopes, right? Slopes are negative reciprocals. Let's go to three dimensions, and let's say we had three, one, two, and i am got another vector. I'll call this uh, V again, and here's W. And I'm going to do 1, 3, and some unknown number k. And I want you to find k so that v and w are orthogonal. Now, I'm not even going to try to draw a picture here. We're in three space. The picture would be really difficult to draw. I want to know what number has to fit there. Now. As soon as you see orthogonal, you think, aha, dot product has to be zero. Dot product has to be zero. So let's dot these together. We've got three, one, two, dotted with one, three, K. How does that work out to be? You know how to do dot products. You multiply these, that's three. You multiply these, that's three. And you multiply these, and that's two K. Add them all up. Now. What's that supposed to equal? It's supposed to be equal zero. That's what we said. So you should be able to solve that. That's a pretty simple equation to solve. What have we got? We've got six plus two k is zero. Two k is negative six. K is negative three. Done. Okay. That's about the only applications for dot products, angles between vectors. Uh, you also use it for projections, uh, things like that. Uh, what I want to spend the rest of the time with, I mean, 116, okay, is cross product. Uh, while dot product is fairly easy, cross product is a little difficult. Uh, again, I'm going to make up some numbers here. Let's say we have 3, 1, negative 2, and I'm crossing it now. Special note is a big X. This is really the only thing X is used for in advanced mathematics. Like the times, you know, like in elementary school, three times four is 12. Okay. You're not going to do that in algebra, but we will use this X for cross product. One, three, and five. Now, I don't know what this answer is. Okay, so the way we're going to work this is we consider a three by three determinant. And you might want to go back and review determinants. It's in your book. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, in the first row, we're going to write ijk, the little unit vectors, ijk. In the second row, we write the components of this first vector, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, negative 2. And in the third row, we write these components, 1, 3, 5. And depending on how you work 3 by 3s, uh, I think... In some Algebra 2 classes, you're shown the rule of Saurus. Did anybody ever learn it this way, where you write this first column over again, like this, and you write the second column over again, like this? Does that look familiar to anybody? And then you multiply, multiply, multiply. Remember doing those? Okay, you can do it that way if you want. If you do it that way, let's see what we get. On this diagonal, we get uh, 5i, 5i, and going this way, it's negative 2j, 
And going this way, it would be 9K. And you'd have to add all those up. What was the second part of the rule, SARS? What'd you do? Go the other way. Right, so you multiply. Now you've got to go this way, those three, and that would be K, 1K. And then going this way, that would be negative 6I. And then going this way, I don't particularly like this method. It certainly works fine, 15J. Okay, what were you supposed to do next after you did that and that? It's sort of like what you did with two by twos. Think what you would do if you had three, five, one, and 100. You multiply this way and you get 300. You multiply this way and you get five. And then what did you do with the 300 and the five? You subtract them, 300 minus five, right? That's how you did a two by two, 300 minus five. So this worked out to be 295. Well, that's what you're going to do here. You're going to take this thing and you're going to subtract that thing. So let's see, five I minus 2J plus 9K, and we're going to be subtracting off all of these. So we're going to subtract off a K, and we're going to subtract off a negative 6I, so that's plus 6I, and we're going to subtract off 15J. And if you can do all that without losing track, then you now have the answer. How many I's we got? We got uh, 11 I's, right? Five and six. So we get 11 I's. Put 11 there. That's the first component. How many J's? We've got minus 2 there, and we're taking away 15. So that's minus 17 J's, minus 17. And then K's, let's see, we've got 9 here, and we're taking away 1. So that would be 8 K's. Eight. This is the cross product. Now, um, Again, I started off with some fairly benign looking numbers and I get 11s and 17s and things like that. How can you tell whether you did it right? Well, here's the check, and it's a pretty easy check. Uh, the, the work can be hard, but the check is super easy. This guy, excuse me, is orthogonal to the other two. If you dot this with this one, you better get zero. Well, let's see. Dot products are super easy. Three, one, negative two, dotted, with 11, negative 17, 8 is supposed to be, question mark, 0. Is it? What do we get? 33 minus 17 minus 16. Does that add up to 0? Yeah, it does. Okay, so that's 0. That checks. Not only is that cross product orthogonal to the first one, it's also orthogonal to the second one. And you can check that. Okay. I'll go ahead and uh, finish this up and give you some sample problems tonight. Check your class page, please. See you then. Yeah.